This video is part two of the biology paper one exam questions. This mini series is where we go through each topic that can come up on paper one. Go check out part one to this video in the description if you've missed it. Remember to pause the video, have a go yourself and then resume the video to see if your answers are correct. The first question is asking us to draw one line from each level of organization to the correct plant part. You are expected to know that the leaf is the organ and the spongy mesophyll layer is the tissue. This is because this layer is a group of cells that are carrying out the same function. The next question shows us a picture of a human showing some organs and it says name parts A, B and C. Now we need to know that A is the bronchus or the bronchi, B is the trachea, C is the alveolus. Which organ system is the heart part of? The heart helps circulate blood around the body so it's going to be the circulatory system. Figure 2 shows us a cross section of a leaf. And it says, in which part of the leaf does the most photosynthesis take place? Well, this is going to be in the palisade mesophyll layer. The reason for this is because it contains the highest amount of chloroplasts. And as you can see from figure two, that will be Q. Now, the next question is asking us what part T is. This is the section of the leaf that opens and closes to allow carbon dioxide to enter. Many students will choose stoma here. But in fact, one cell is called the guard cell. Two guard cells create the stoma. The following question asks us what is a tissue? And this is just a group of cells with a similar structure or function. Draw one line from each tissue to its function. We have the epidermis, phloem and spongy mesophyll layer. In this question it's talking about the upper epidermis and this allows light through to the photosynthesizing parts of the leaf, aka the palisade mesophyll layer we spoke about in a previous question. The phloem transport sugars around the plant and the spongy mesophyll layer allows diffusion of gases through the leaf. The next question is asking us to put the words that are in the box in order from smallest to largest. The exam paper is expecting you to know that a group of cells make a tissue, a group of tissues make an organ and a group of organs make an organ system. The next question again is talking about organization. We need to be able to categorize three different structures. The stomach is an organ, the cells line in the stomach is a tissue and the mouth, esophagus, stomach, etc. must be an organ system because that is a group of organs. The organ system they belong to is the digestive system. This next question is asking us to draw one line from each type of blood vessel to the structure of the blood vessel. So we need to know that arteries are very, very thick. So that's going to go to the thick muscular tissue. The capillary is only one cell thick. So that's going to go to the top and then veins they do have some muscular tissue, but not as much as arteries. The follow-up question is asking us to explain how the structure of an artery is related to its function. So we can describe what the picture was showing, which was it has thick walls. It has these muscular walls because it needs to push blood around the body and withstand high blood pressure. The image you can see on screen shows blood viewed through a microscope, and it's asking us to name A and B. Well, we already know what the red blood cells look like. So A has to be the white blood cells, because white blood cells are larger than red blood cells. This means B has to either be platelets or plasma. Well, plasma is just a fluid that the cells are submerged in, so the answer must be platelets. The next question gives us some information about a red blood cell. It says, suggest how these adaptations help the red blood cell carry out its function. Well, what is the function of a red blood cell? It's to transport oxygen around the body. So if it has no nucleus, that must mean there is more space for the haemoglobin or for the oxygen. The red pigment called haemoglobin is the thing that binds or carries the oxygen. The following questions are talking about food molecules and enzymes. The first says which two products are formed when lipids are broken down. Now we need to know that lipids are made from glycerol and fatty acids. So the answer is fatty acids and glycerol. The second question gives us the model of the lock and key theory. And it says, use information from the diagram above to explain the lock and key theory of enzyme action. So let's start from the very beginning. The enzyme binds to the substrate, and this can only happen if the enzyme's active site is complementary. The substrate is then broken down. Once broken down, the products are then released, and the enzyme remains unchanged. It doesn't get used up. So you can have either of those four bullet points. The last question on this page says why does each different type of lipase act on only one specific type of lipid molecule? So lipase is the enzyme that breaks down lipids. And this is because 
Lipase has an active site that needs to have a complementary shape to the substrate, or in this instance, one specific type of lipid molecule. This last question is where students get really, really confused, only because there's lots of information, and the following questions relate back to this information. So let's go through it. Students were investigating the presence of starch and glucose in some leaves. They placed two identical plants on a bench near a sunny window for two days. After the two days, they leave one plant near the window for two more days, but they take one of the plants and place that in a cupboard with no light for two more days. So one of them is getting four days of sunlight and the other is only getting the first two days. They then take a leaf from each of the plants, crush it up and then extract the liquid. They can then test the liquid from each leaf for glucose and starch. Now the follow-up questions to that piece of information is based on the starch and glucose tests. The first one says, describe how the students would find out if the liquid from the leaf contained glucose. So we just need to describe the glucose test. Firstly, you need to add the Benedict solution to the liquid. You would then boil or heat it, and if the glucose is present, the colour will change from blue to red. The second question is asking us to test for starch, and we do this by adding iodine solution. If starch is present in the solution, then that means the colour will turn black from like a browny orange colour. So if you get this question in your exam, you just need to give the instructions and then the positive test result. The table below shows the student's results. And the question is, explain why the leaf in the light for four days contained both glucose and starch. Well, where did the glucose come from? That was made from photosynthesis. Because the plant was exposed to four days of light, there was an excess amount of glucose that was made, and this was stored as starch. The last question of the video asks us to explain why the leaf left in a cupboard did not contain any starch. In reality, in those first two days, glucose was probably converted into starch, but because the students then took it away from the light and hid it for two days, the starch stores was then converted back to glucose because the plant needed glucose to be used as energy. The plant had to resort to using the starch stores because new glucose could not be made due to the lack of sunlight exposure. If you have made it this far into the video, then give it a like, leave a comment, let me know what you want me to go through next, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.